Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're doing the JMA uh, free monthly um, update for today's uh, first video. This is going to take us through the next three months, through September, October, November, the whole of the autumn uh, 2019 with the long range models, uh, from, with long range model from the um, JMA. Uh, and we'll see what it's showing uh, for the autumn. Now we will be doing the third and final autumn 2019 season one roundup on Saturday. Uh, and that's where I'm going to get something like 12 or 13 long range models together and see what they're all showing for the final time that is autumn. The JMA uh, model will form part of that um, of that roundup. Uh, but of course, uh, we can't look in depth for each individual model because we've got something to get through with that. So with the JMA, you get a lot of information out of this model uh, on a month by month basis over the coming three months. But uh, within the season model roundup, we won't have time to go in depth into what the JMA is showing. So we always like to take this one out and sort of isolate it in its own terms, really, and uh, have a look in depth at it. So that's what we're going to do for this first video. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have a week 10 day video update as usual uh, to Gazweathers. That will be here on the homepage at gazweathers.com this afternoon. And tonight we've got, I think it's up to up to update number five now, uh, the fifth update for the uh, late summer bank holiday weekend. And that will include some of those events and festivals that will be taking place over uh, that weekend as well. So, busy old day, guys. I think so you're finding uh, the content interesting and informative. But starting us off is the free monthly update from the JMA. So, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly from the North uh, Pole view, from the Arctic view down into uh, the Northern Hemisphere for September. Uh, so it's only one month away. If everything is uh, working as it should be, then this uh, ought to be the most reliable part of uh, the update. So uh, with these charts, yellow, orange and red will be extrapolated to above average heights, which is, uh, which is high pressure. And blue colours will be extrapolated to below average heights, which is low pressure. Now, it looks like the JMA is going for an area of above average heights in the middle of the North Atlantic. Uh, so it looks like you've got a bit of a, bit, a, bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge there through the North Atlantic and going up towards Greenland. There's also some, some above average heights extending over towards uh, sort of Iceland into the northwest of Scotland. There's no particular trough of low pressure, but this area just here, this sort of cream coloured area, looks like that should really be a trough of below average heights to the south of the country. So you might look at the colours. I mean, the UK is generally in these yellow colours, which is just slightly above average in terms of the heights. You might look at that and think that's going to be a settled September. I'm not sure it is all that settled, really. Uh, the, the core of the ridge is in the mid-Atlantic and going up towards Greenland. Uh, it looks like we've got below average heights to ourselves. So this could actually be quite a coolish, because the wind would be probably coming from a northeasterly direction, quite a coolish. And potentially, if we do get this trough going uh, underneath the mid-Atlantic ridge, if we start to bring low pressure in on that sort of track... Uh, and start sending a jet stream through on that sort of trap. Then potentially this is a rather unsettled signal uh, for September. So we'll drill down in a moment and have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights. But I suspect that could well be a little bit more unsettled than it might at first appear for September. Now this is clearly uh, unsettled. This is October's 500 millibar height anomaly. So in October, we've got the ridge going over towards Scandinavia, but it does also extend back towards Greenland to some degree. So we have got northern blocking during the course of uh, October. But we've also got this trough of below average height sitting just to the west southwest of us. That is an actual trough of low pressure that's to the west of us now. So this obviously it's unsettled. It's going to be bringing in the wind from a west southwest direction, and you expect to say quite an unsettled month there on that sort of uh, solution. It wouldn't be particularly cold, I wouldn't have thought, because the wind should be coming up from the southwest. Um, so it should be a relatively mild month, but uh, certainly uh, quite an unsettled month in October. And it gets even more unsettled as we go through to uh, November. So we get this deep trough of below average heights almost centred over the top of the UK, really, in November. Uh, the JMA takes the high pressure up towards the north of Scandinavia. So we have got a northern blocking signal here continuing to November, centering it around uh, Svalbard. 
And uh, it just looks very unsettled, this, with uh, the jet stream coming through like that. Winds are in from the west, so it's uh, generally Atlantic-driven type month. Although, with that much uh, northern blocking sitting uh, over the north of Scandinavia and back into the Arctic, there would, of course, be the risk, anyway, that you might start trying to entrain some cold air down into that trough of low pressure. But as it is, it should generally be quite wetty. So I think the German is going for an unsettled autumn here. It's going for quite a, a, quite a, a, quite a wet autumn, I would have thought. Uh, relatively mild autumn, no sign of anything especially cold, although the northern blocking signals are still there. So uh, we did yesterday the update with the um, ECMWF uh, Metro France and DWD long-range models going through the autumn into the early winter. You'll remember if you saw that, then um, generally those models are taking the northern blocking signals away and sort of setting up uh, strongly positive NAO and, uh, and positive AO type conditions. So we go back to uh, very low heights over the, uh, over the North Pole and over the Arctic um, and we bring in uh, westerly winds. So still unsettled, but just generally losing the blocking that we've had previous summer. The German wants to keep that blocking going. Never in a position really to give us anything particularly cold up to November, but it is quite striking that even at November, it does have some very significant northern blocking sitting to our north and northeast there with the JMA. Uh, right, so let's start drilling down into the detail of this then. So we're going to come back to September and have a look at, uh, at some of the details. So this is the tropical and mid-latitude view. That's the equator of the Earth just there. So we've got the northern hemisphere. Uh, just here, and the southern hemisphere is uh, down there. Now, we can't see the polar regions there off the charts. We're just having that view down there, so we don't need to see that. Again, particularly the North Pole is uh, up there with the Arctic as well, of course. South Pole is uh, going to be down here. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's where the UK is just there. The top right hand of the chart, uh, UK and Ireland is there. Europe is there. Russia is going to be there. Uh, that's the Pacific Ocean, that's the Atlantic Ocean, that's Canada, and that's North America just there. That, of course, is South America. So, so everybody knows where uh, where everyone is. Um, right, let's uh, have a look at uh, what it's showing for September in terms of the detail. So, a reminder of the 500 middle bar height only for September. It has an area of above average heights in the Atlantic, or centred in the middle of the Atlantic, and going up towards uh, Greenland. So the temperature anomaly during September with the JMA is looking like this. Very much uh, close to average, a little bit above average. It's not a particularly warm month being signalled. Uh, and it is a bit more unsettled than you might have thought from the uh, height anomaly. So precipitation actually has a bit of an all-south split. And interestingly, northern parts of the country, Scotland and Ireland, tend to be a little bit drier with England and Wales tending to be a little bit wetter. So it definitely looks, going back to this, it definitely looks as though there probably is where we've got this cream coloured area. This is actually a trough of below average heights, I think. It's actually a trough of low pressure with high pressure out there. And so that brings the risk of the most significant rain, anyway, into more southern parts of the country during uh, September. So England and Wales turn out a little bit wetter than average. Scotland and Northern Ireland actually turn out to be a little bit drier than average. The main wind direction for September, always a job to make these black arrows out because they're quite small, but the wind direction is actually sort of east northeasterly, uh, coming in rather like that. Uh, obviously, that's not going to be particularly cold in September. It's still sort of quite a warm month, really, September. But um, it's not going to be particularly mild either. Northeast winds in September will tend to be a little bit on the chilly side. And especially so if it's unsettled, of course. If there's rain um, involved with this, then we could have a few really quite cool and unsettled days, perhaps. Uh, this is uh, October's um, detailed chart. So in October, uh, again, you can't see Scandinavia and Polarfield, but in um, in October, we have the above average heights sort of up to the northeast and to the north of us. So the high pressure sort of north, northeast. Low pressure is developing to the west and to the southwest. Looks quite unsettled, probably bringing in 
uh, a westerly or southwesterly flow. The temperature anomaly during October holds up. So that comes out uh, slightly above average again. Not a big deviation, just around average to up to uh, one degree above average. Quite an unsettled month as well. It still hints a bit of an all-south split, actually. So for northern parts of the country, still looks a little bit drier than average there across Scotland. Uh, England and Wales still a bit wetter than average. Uh, quite an unsettled month, though, I would have thought. And uh, this is what the um, mean wind direction is showing. So, uh, again, quite difficult to make these black arrows out. They're kind of coming up from the south and then turning around into east to southeast of this. A little bit like that. So not quite as west southwest as I thought it might have been. So, again, we've got this drop of leverage heights just here. So I suppose doing something a bit like that with, uh, with the wind direction. So that's the reason it's a relatively warm month, but also potentially a little bit more on the uh, unsettled side with winds in from a uh, sort of southerly, southeasterly, potentially for northern parts of the country, rather easterly direction. And then finish up in November, which does look very, very unsettled indeed. Low pressure, below average heights just out to west of us, but really centre more or less over top of the country now. Uh, we can't see Scandinavia and the northern Scandinavia, but there's big area of high pressure blocking up here. Uh, and we're bringing in, again, I would have thought we're bringing in westerly winds. We'll confirm that with wind arrows in a moment. Temperature anomaly has continued to hold up a little bit above average. So there's no sign of anything particularly cold this autumn. Temperature anomaly should be uh, relatively mild. It's unsettled as well in November, so it's going for quite a wet month. Hardly a surprise with a trough of low pressure parked over the top of the country. And the, the wind direction is sort of west, possibly a bit northwesterly with the black arrows. So they're coming in from that sort of direction. And there is a bit of a normally tilt, actually, to the wind into this trough of low pressure. So that's because of the blocking that I talked about sitting around Svalbard. There is the chance of entrenching some quite cold air, potentially, maybe, into that trough of low pressure, especially as the month progresses. But, of course, it's three months away, so that's the most unreliable part of all of this. But potentially quite a, although the temperature anomaly looks relatively mild, potentially quite a, quite a cold and unsettled month, actually, in November, I would have thought. Sometimes you have to interpret what these models are what, what, what these models are showing. I would have thought that it takes quite a cold and settled month in November. Before that, temperatures do look generally quite mild or warm. Uh, but also, it's an unsettled autumn, I think, this, that the JMA is going for. Although the um, precipitation anomalies are not particularly dramatic. I mean, all the way through it, even in September, which looks like it should be the most settled of the three, really. Even that generally is not all that settled and could actually be quite unsettled at times and it just gets more and more unsettled as we progress so this is potentially quite a wettish autumn i think that the jma is going for here uh, generally quite mild for most of it but by november possibly the chance that we're starting to pull in some cold air from the north by that blocking that's sitting there up over uh, Svalbard and to the north of Scandinavia. So we shall see. Anyway, this is going to form part of the uh, third and final seasonal model round of the autumn of 2019. That's going to be coming up on Saturday morning. It'll be released on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. You've had a good look at the JMA uh, now. So when we just zip through all of them, we've got around 12.30 to get through. When we zip through them, when we get to J the JMA, which we'll probably start off with, actually. Uh, when we get to the JMA, we will, um, you'll know what it show uh, in detail uh, as we zip through it. Right, so that's that done. Uh, we'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video update. And then tonight, we're going to have another look at the bank holiday weekend. So uh, keep checking back to all of the updates. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.